Ed here with the Digital Digest, and today I wanted to share a video about making your home smarter. Now, I'm not a big fan of using the smart terminology when it comes to home automation or really just having connectivity with any device of your choice, but of course, that is the branding we've come to all know and understand. And in front of you, you've got four directly competing products. Granted, the Echo Show really isn't the direct competitor of the full-size Google Home, the regular Echo is, but I'm sharing with all of you what I'm actually using in my home since I've rebuilt it, you know, rebuilt it post Hurricane Matthew. And I have found that really if you want to turn your home into a fully automated, networked, controllable uh, ecosystem, you do need both of these in your house. Now I'm sure many of you out there swear by Amazon's Echo line and then there are others that swear by of course Google's product but I will be the first to tell you they both have strengths and weaknesses and that'll be part of today's video. For those of you unfamiliar of course this is the full-size Google Home which originally retailed for 130 US dollars and now you can find for somewhere around depending on any given sale 70 80 maybe less and I anticipate prices will go down as a new version is pushed out the Google Home Mini that I have right here originally launched at $49 and that launched this year uh, not that long ago uh, this was at Google's last IO convention uh, or conference I should say and it has already been reduced to $29 pretty much right now at every retailer and some are throwing in gift cards some are not, but at $29, this is a basically identical product to the larger Google Home counterpart, just with a much less capable speaker. Uh, I can tell you right now in terms of voice recognition, um, they are basically identical products. Their capability is identical. Again, the key difference is that the speaker on this for music playback, uh, using it for a speaker phone, uh, for your phone for making calls, uh, alarms, reminders, timers, anything of that nature, that's where you're going to really benefit from that louder uh, projection from that more powerful speaker. On the right hand side, of course, as I mentioned, we've got part of Amazon's uh, ecosystem, uh, ironically, of the Echo. The Dot, this is in its second generation, uh, is also priced. This is actually a direct competitor to the Google Home Mini, and you're looking at $30 and they're also incentivizing purchasing this. I know Best Buy right now is throwing in a TP-Link um, networked uh, adapter for a traditional wall outlet, things of that nature. Some vendors are throwing in gift cards like Newegg. I don't know how much Amazon is doing even though of course I will be including links uh, for all of these products. Well, they won't be selling these of course because Amazon is not pro Google Home. And then we've got the Echo Show which again, the direct competitor to the Google Home would be the traditional Echo, which is much like the Google Home, just a Bluetooth speaker that recognizes commands for home automation, networking, and of, of course, information pertaining to your calendar, reminders, things of that nature. You know, your day-to-day -day schedule, your weekly routine. But of course, what makes the show unique, unlike the traditional Echo, is that it does have an actual display as well as a built-in camera. That's a webcam. So this gives you a little bit more flexibility and for my setup, it was potentially, of course, a differentiating feature from what's offered by Google because there is no visualization on Google's end. And if you are working with the Nest product line like myself, you have cameras, thermostats, uh, CO detectors, uh, you know, pretty much everything that Nest sells, I'll eventually move to one of their doorbells once it launches in 2018, because while the Ring Doorbell Pro is a fine product, it, I'm sure, is going to be far more convenient, and I do expect more consistency out of Google's Nest lineup, and to have it again in one app, of course, is superior. But back to the point I was making about the show, part of the visualization is that with this product, I can easily bring up any of those cameras. That is not something I could do with any of Google's home automation products. Now this was originally, uh, I think about 230 something in that realm, and uh, it has already dropped in price tremendously. So 
I do think the show is a good value. They are coming out with a smaller version of the show that is circular. Go figure. The circular theme uh, looks a lot like what NVIDIA was uh, trying to enter the market with, with their own uh, AI automation device of this nature. But back to the strengths and strengths and weaknesses. So why have both? Well, first and foremost, depending on which of these devices you purchase, it's going to completely dictate what music service you subscribe to. So if you are someone who actively uses Google Play's uh, marketplace for music and you're a monthly subscriber, you have to have a Google Home, either a mini or the full size, in order to actually leverage that service you're paying for. And I mean playing music back on either of these devices or if you want to pair it up with a Chromecast uh, to an amp like I have connected to my Sonos amp and then pipe music through voice commands through your entire home if your home is set up with a traditional hardwired speaker system. Uh, in other words, you do not need to create a new network of speakers if you already have an existing one uh, and that I think is a great feature. Of course, this also applies to connecting it to any bookshelf system, home theater, whatever it may be. As long as it has a line in, you can throw that, connect that Chromecast to that line in and then cast music from either of these devices. However, with Amazon's product line, that is impossible. You can only use Amazon's own music store. And of course, there's no casting to a Chromecast that is not in the Amazon uh, ecosystem. It's not part of their language. It's not part of their marketing. So that's the one big division that I will stress immediately out of the gate. When it comes to music, Google Play Music here, Amazon Music. And that's unfortunately a reality of this home automation war between these two, uh, I would say, best-in-class product groups. Now, beyond that, when it comes to voice recognition, which of course is critical. We're talking to both of these, whether we're saying, okay, Google, or hey, Google, in order to trigger each of these. And I will plug them in, even though we're seven minutes in already. And here we're saying, Alexa, Alexa, Alexa. So they have keywords and they trigger. I can already tell you, Google far and away destroys the Echo product line in terms of voice recognition and actual understanding and AI capability. So when it comes to asking specific questions, that you want answers to, Google is going to have a better shot at answering it. If you were to say to me, which one is the, the idiot in the room, it's certainly Alexa. Um, Google Home, after all, is a product of Google, which can leverage, obviously, more information than any other engine on Earth, and that's reflected in the capability of the AI of the Google Home product. Again, whether you're going with the mini or the full size. When it comes to the Echo, Alexa is a trained uh, AI robot at best. And by, but that does not mean it does not execute tasks in a superior manner to what you're getting over here with Google Home. So while Google Home is smarter, it has a lot less of the actual functional polish that you get with Amazon's Echo lineup. So what does that mean? It means that I have now probably 60 plus Hue lights, Philips Hue lights in my home. Everything is fully networked. I have quite a few problems getting Google Home to turn those lights on and off. And this is not a setup issue where I haven't done things right. It just has issues. Even though the lights are assigned properly, the names of the rooms are assigned properly, it will tend to have disconnects with certain lights. That doesn't happen with the Echo. However, the Echo's ability to understand what room I'm commanding to turn the lights on and off in is not as good as what Google Home you know, can do when it comes to recognition. Now, of course, if the product is more capable technically but can't understand you, that's a failing in itself. But the Dot does do a better job on voice recognition than the larger Echo Show. And so does the regular Echo uh, that competes directly with the Google Home. But of course, uh, still inferior to the Google Home. I wanna make that very clear. So we've gone over music, we've gone over the brains in each of these, which is more intelligent, which is more functional and capable because really of its lifespan on the market. The Echo uh, system, now I'm really getting cute for Amazon, too bad they don't pay me for anything, 
that is something where because it's been around for years whereas google entered this space a, all of a little over a year ago it has much broader support uh, so if you're trying to look for the home automation device that's going to likely pair up and work with as many products as possible then amazon is your go-to but again you're going to find shortcomings in its intelligence there's no question about it uh, just even asking simple questions here you will often get answer you'll get i i can't help you i don't understand whereas with google home you will actually get answers even if they are pulled from the likes of wikipedia the idea is is that one really shows more intelligence. So we've talked about music, we've talked about the AI, we've talked about voice recognition and the fact that it is superior uh, in the Google Home line, but can't execute as well as the Echo system. So it's this is really why I have all of these in my home. And when I say all of these, I don't have just what you see here. You can imagine there are many more. I have two Echo Shows. I think I now have three or four dots. I have two uh, of the minis and two of the full-size Google Homes. And who knows, it may get larger. Uh, but right now, that's where I'm at in terms of making sure there is an access point for voice control for lighting, music, and of course here with the show, visualizations for all of my security cameras as well as my ring doorbell. So these are all things that are niceties of having a display and hopefully eventually Google will address that too because it's sad that the only way I can view a Nest camera without looking at my phone or a computer or a tablet is through the Echo Show. Google legitimately should have a product that can accomplish that. Now with that said, let me go ahead and plug these in, something I should have done at the beginning of the video because most of the viewers have probably left by now, but those of you that have been patient, hopefully will be satisfied on some level with this power up. So here we go. And I've brought all of the cables to the party. Excuse the uh, audio drop there. So you can see I've got a nice little bundle of wires. And the first one, let's see, let's, let's do a little lottery pick here that I will start with is the Google Home. It's gonna be the longest reach. I'm actually gonna just relocate it altogether. Simple proprietary plug right there. You'll see the startup. All of these have the ability to be muted. Uh, they all have dedicated buttons to mute their microphones because after all, for those of you that are paranoid about the NSA or FBI listening into your conversations, well, they could be, but these are really not for you, that's for sure, because essentially you're giving networked microphones a shot in possibly every room in your house, kind of like me. I'm not trying to tip off that anybody should start listening to me, because I don't really have anything interesting for anyone anyway. There's the startup noise. That's max volume. You can see here with the dot, we have a micro USB port as well as a line out. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and plug that in which is going to be prompted by an LED, uh, blue LED, that's going to go ahead and or take us through its startup, which is also the cue for recognition, uh, much like the Google Home also uses uh, its own little LED uh, for recognition that you are talking to it. I find that you have to be more deliberate with what you're telling the Echo. Well, we got a really cinematic startup from Amazon. Anticlimactic. Hello. Exactly. Your Amazon Echo Dot is ready for setup. Now, Just follow the instructions in this, your Alexa app. This is a brand new dot that hasn't been added to network yet, for those of you wondering why, but I already have plenty set up. Now I am on to the next, which is, of course, the Google Home Mini. Let's see if I'm going in the right way. Da -da 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 Come on. Oh, I think I actually used the wrong plug. Yes, I did. Look at that. Unsurprising. Well, there is good news. You almost have the ability to use the plug on both. But uh, the plug from the Echo cannot actually fit in the Google Home. So that is why I could not actually insert it. 
and I'm having trouble with micro USB ports. Why is that not surprising? And last but not least, the big ass Echo Show, which is literally a large device unlike any of these. And I do like it. Again, what makes it unique and novel is that display. The reality is, is that that's about it. Its speaker performance is inferior to the Google Home full size. And you also have an, an probably the worst microphone of all Hello. of these. Your Amazon Echo Dot is ready for setup. Okay, we know that Just already. Just follow the instructions in your Alexa app. Now you've got the show going to town. And uh, there is an Intel processor. Hello. Oh, blowing us out. There is an Intel processor inside the show, for those of you that are wondering. And they're all hot now. They're all lit. So, hey Google, what time is it? It's 2.01. Okay, for some reason I didn't get both of them to respond. Let's try that again. I want to show you the speaker uh, difference here. Hey Google, max volume. Hey Google, what time is it? The time is 2.02. And you can see, I mean, personally, the aesthetic for me, Google takes it far and away with both the large and mini. They are just not comparable when it comes to aesthetic. Uh, the Echo looks more like a traditional China, uh, nothing that, not that there's anything wrong with China, don't misinterpret this, but something that a lot of time really was not spent on. Um, the visualizations, it's just not as eye-pleasing as what Google has put together. Now here with the show, of course, Again, unique form factor. I wish the speakers were better. Uh, I'm not gonna do any audio playback. I could pull up uh, a camera uh, just to show what it act, you know, the actual purpose for me personally, uh, but I'll give you an idea, obviously, of what Alexa sounds like. Alexa, what time is it? The time is 2.03 a.m. Now you know how late I'm shooting this. So there you have that at max volume, which is close to what the Google Home does, but not quite as loud. And it doesn't have, uh, because they're front firing speakers as opposed to 360 degrees, uh, it's just not, the fidelity on it is not as good as the Google Home. I can also tell you when I rank something like this, either of these products with my Harman Kardon Aura, uh, they don't that neither of them matches up to the capability of that Bluetooth uh, network speaker, but the Google Home certainly comes closer. And considering its form factor, that is very, very impressive. If I wanted to pull up a camera, it would be as easy as using the keyword and saying, you know, to show me camera, fill in the blank, which I could do. I don't really want to show anybody where I live. Too many trolls out there these days, or always have been, but I could give it a run. So let's try it out. Thinking of which camera to actually show you, and I have the perfect one because it's a beautiful, beautiful view. Alexa, show the north side camera. Okay. Now you can see it's waiting for Nest. And there we have it. It is raining, but this is something I could not do with Amazon. I mean, excuse me, with Google. Alexa, exit. Now, another thing I want to point out beyond that is you've seen some of the capability of what the show can do. It's not a feature that I use a lot, but I know it's a feature that a lot of people I know use is the drop-in feature that the Echo has. Something that right now Google does not have, but I imagine it likely will be added. And basically that just allows you to use your Echoes, no matter what brand series they are or generation, as an intercom system. And of course, if you have the show or their new little you know, round uh, <laughs> unit that's coming out with the screen that also has a camera, you can actually video chat rather than just do audio uh, conversations from one echo to another. So 
Obviously, that might be great for those of you looking to have an intercom in-house for not only to have AI and automation, but also an intercom system. It is a good added value, I believe. I think, for me personally, it's not of great use, but I understand why a lot of people would enjoy having that functionality. And again, Google Home doesn't support it. Now, another example of something I can control with the Echo system, but not with Google Home, would be something like the lock on my door. Boy, I'm giving a, a thief an entire rundown of how I control everything here. So I can unlock and lock my door using the Echo and also control something like, uh, for example, a Wemo uh, smart plug in order to control one of the few lamps I have that obviously can't be hueified, so to speak. Uh, but I cannot do that with the Google Home. And that's part of the maturation and being in the marketplace longer, which Amazon does have in its favor. And I can't reiterate that enough. If you're looking purely for the broadest blanket that can be thrown over home automation, Amazon has the lead. Now, how long that lead is going to last is a big question because it's just a matter of time. And Google's incentive really lies in how many of these things they are selling. I don't know what the numbers have been like. Uh, I do know that initially I thought this was the superior product, no question about it. Uh, I'm activating the okay. screen here. You can see you can control volume uh, just by rolling that around. Uh, but with time, as I mentioned, when I started to see that some of my Hue lights would not respond properly and I tested it out with something as simple as a dot and saw that Alexa, cancel, could actually handle it, cancel, that was critical. Um, and it's the difference between wanting to purchase one and the other. But because I do defer to Google Play Music and, again, think that the Chromecast capability and the ability to turn on things that are Android-driven, that are um, Google-based, and when I say that, I mean, for example, I have a 75-inch uh, Sony 940E television that is Android driven, that is something that I can turn on using Google Home. I cannot do that with the Echo. Or if I can, I just haven't learned how yet. So I stand to be corrected if someone else is aware. Uh, but that is something natively in the Google Home application. And of course, you're going to have to work with the Amazon Alexa app cancel, as well as the Google Home app uh, in order to add all of these things, which by the way, is a pain in the ass. Uh, I'm letting you know in advance. You are not gonna have fun. Do not get excited about this. Networking all of your devices is something you're gonna wanna pay someone else to do, but of course you're gonna find yourself doing it because you're not going to really wanna pay someone else to do it. Uh, especially if you're undertaking something like I've done with all the lighting, uh, the music playback, uh, the cameras, it is a big undertaking to get it right, to do everything, and anyone who tells you otherwise is full of crap. So bear that in mind. Uh, while they're cute and they seem like great things, which they are, they do change the way you live on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, the reality is, is that you are going to have to invest time in order to get all of these products to work in the best way that suits your needs. Another upside to the Google Home that I don't have with uh, the Echo is that if I want to set reminders, if I want to mark things on my calendar with my Note 8, it's seamless with Google Home. With Alexa, I don't have that advantage. Stop listening to me, Alexa. So... Sorry, I don't know that one. Exactly. She sounds like an idiot, and I hate even saying she because it's not a she. We all know that. It's just a robot voice that sounds like a woman. Um, and you can, by the way, change that to your preference. Um, so if you want to hear a man's voice and that's your thing, you can switch it up. Um, but even the voice on its own here sounds more robotic than what you get with Google. And that again speaks to Google having a little more polish on the exterior, but again, not having the breadth of compatibility and functionality that the Echo line of products has. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I haven't told you, but this pretty much covers my experience thus far with all of these smart, you know, home automation 
AI devices. I think they're all worth having. That's why I have all of them. And if one of them could do everything that I needed, trust me, I would not be buying all this crap. Now, when I call it crap, I mean, I never imagined I was going to need both of these. As I mentioned earlier, I started out with the home. I didn't think I was going to need anything else. And then once I had the Hue problem, and I can add some more things that I already mentioned, like my locking system, uh, there were just too many things uh, not to bring in the Echo. But again, the screen on the show is a game changer if you want to be able to pull up things, whether it's the ring doorbell or the camera like I showed you before, and have that flexibility that you just don't have a visualization with these little networked speakers. It's just not going to happen. And another thing is that while a lot of people think this product, the Mini, either of these Minis are great for bedside or in the bedroom, I should say, I will let you know right now if you plan on using them for alarms to wake you up, this is where you're going to want to go or this. And I don't want to have a camera in my bedroom. I think that's self-explanatory, even though I did once upon a time have a Sony TV with a camera built in, but Sony realized that was a big mistake and uh, on their revision omitted that camera because they knew that that was completely inappropriate. Uh, but all of that aside, uh, you're going to need a little more oomph from the higher end models and that includes, includes the second gen regular Echo uh, because the Dot uh, and, the, and the Mini just do not produce that much uh, volume. They can't. I mean, look at their form factor. They're, they're pretty small. Uh, the Google Home is Mini is a little bit larger. It's also a little bit louder, but you're not going to really be able to use these, uh, like I said before, as true alarms. I don't have enough cable length here to really bring these back into frame, but that's just the, the truth of the matter. So, I mean, all of them are great products. They all need more polish. I've told you exactly how, where, and why. But I do think that if you're going to try to network your whole home, I forgot, even vacuums, that's another thing. You know, I just picked up the Shark Ion, which I'm not a big fan of Shark, but at the price and knowing that they're very good copycats, it was, you know, an offer I couldn't refuse. So I jumped into that product and that can be controlled with the Echo, but it cannot be controlled by the Google Home. Now, when I say controlled, that's really a very loose term because what I mean is that I can tell it to start vacuuming. That's not really having control, but that's certainly better than not being able to tell it to even start or dock, which I cannot do with the Google Home. So hopefully I've given you enough tangible examples from when it comes to lighting, home security, music playback, uh, voice recognition, and even the intercom, the drop-in feature here, of course, making phone calls, when I mentioned uh, making phone calls, you can do that with the Echo line of products too, but be confident that since I've already told you the microphones are better, the fidelity of the microphones on uh, the, the recognition uh, on the Google Home uh, outfit is superior, that also means your call experience is going to be superior with the Google Home products as opposed to the Echo. It doesn't mean it won't be functional, I'm just telling you, it will. you will be heard and your call will sound better with Google than it will with Amazon. But again, that pretty much covers everything. I didn't plan on running this long. I probably should have started the video with everything powered up because I probably put some people to sleep, but what's new, Pussycat? Hope you all enjoyed the video. If you didn't, I can't help you, obviously. But um, this covers what is out there right now in the world of home automation from both Google and Amazon. And I think they both have a place in just about everyone's home until each of them gets better at what they're doing. Any questions or comments, please feel free to post them. Hit that like button. And as usual, please feel free to subscribe. Later.